At your annual medical checkup, your doctor tells you that you have kidney failure and that you have been put on the wait list for an organ. However, the estimated waiting time is between 15 to 17 years. The doctor explains that the long waiting time is due to the lack of organs available for transplant, as compatible organs may not always be available at the time, and most people do not like to serve as organ donors. On your way back home, you think about the possible solutions, but by the time you reach home, you can only think of two solutions. The first solution is to wait for a donor. However, the waiting time is very long and you might be too sick or even dead by then. The second solution is to kill someone and forcefully take their organ. But this is unethical and you will most probably be put on the death sentence. Is there really no other solution? What about taking organs from animals? This is how xenografting came into being. Xenografting is the process of transferring living tissues or organs from one species into another. It not only alleviates the problem of organ shortage as we now have another source of organs for transplant, but xenografting also has fewer ethical concerns compared to cloning humans and harvesting organs from the clones. The first case of a xenograft was successfully carried out in 1984 on an American infant girl known as Baby Faye, who had hypoplastic left heart syndrome, a syndrome where there is a hole in the heart. Baby Faye received a baboon's heart. However, Baby Faye only lived for three weeks after the xenograft and died due to graft rejection as her immune system attacked the transplanted organ. After this case, the limitations of xenografting were soon discovered. Firstly, it is difficult to find a suitable non-human species. Primates were thought to be the closest living relatives to humans, thus they were considered as a potential organ source for xenotransplantation to humans. However, there are many restrictions. Chimpanzees have good blood compatibility with humans, but are considered an endangered species. And baboons, though more readily available, are not compatible because they have smaller organs compared to humans. Secondly, there is a risk of cross-species disease. Normally, viruses that infect other animals find it difficult to enter our bodies because of defense mechanisms like our skin. Furthermore, these viruses are unable to bind to the receptor molecules found on our cell membrane to enter and infect our cells. However, by transplanting animal organs directly into humans, we allow these viruses to bypass our primary defense mechanism. Furthermore, when these viruses enter our bloodstream, it can obtain genetic material from other viruses that do infect humans to gain the ability to bind to our receptor molecules and infect us. An example of a cross-species disease is the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, which originated from primates, and macaque herpes, which originated from the macaque monkeys. Many of these viruses are non-lethal in the animal kingdom, but lethal to humans. Thirdly, as seen in Baby Faye's case, transplanting an animal organ into a human runs the risk of organ rejection because the immune system recognizes the transplanted organ as a foreign entity. The immune system does this through recognizing proteins known as major histocompatibility complex, MHC, that are found on the surface of cells. In a healthy cell, MHC proteins bind to and display the cell's peptides on the cell surface membrane. However, during an infection, MHC proteins bind to and display viral peptides. This helps white blood cells differentiate between healthy and infected cells. In the case of baby Faye, where the monkey heart was transplanted, the MHC proteins are the antigens that are detected by the white blood cells. As a result, the white blood cells identified the monkey heart as foreign and an immune response was generated to kill off the transplanted organ. A possible solution to overcoming all these limitations is to use humanized organs from pigs. Pigs are thought to be the best xenograph organ donors as they are easy to raise and their organs are about the same size as human organs. Furthermore, the risk of cross-species disease transmission is low as pigs are phylogenetically distant from humans, meaning that in the evolutionary tree, 
they evolved very differently from humans. And hence, it is unlikely the viruses that infect pigs are able to infect humans. Lastly, by humanizing animals, we are, in essence, removing their MHC. By removing the MHC, there would be no antigens present in the transplanted organ, and our immune systems would not recognize the organs as a foreign entity. This reduces the risk of organ rejection and makes the animal organs relatively safe to transplant. In summary, we have discussed the problem of organ shortage, which has led us to seek for alternative donors. Next, we've talked about xenografting, where living tissues or organs are transplanted from one species to another, and what the benefits of it are. So, do you think xenografting is a viable solution to organ shortage?